Billy had had a good year and a bad year. He had had a successful year hatching and selling baby chicks to chapter members. On the other hand, he had lost his grandma that year and that was pretty hard on him. She had always told him to do his best and be successful, so Billy was starting to think about a career in poultry science. Billy had always been interested in being a veterinarian, so he had been taking plenty of math and science in high school. However, after his success in raising chickens, he started researching the possibility of being a poultry veterinarian. He learned that there was a shortage of veterinarians who specialized in poultry medicine. He also learned that it was highly recommended that he gain some experience by working with a veterinarian. Billy visited with his ag science instructor who suggested that he apply with a local veterinarian who might let him job shadow for a few hours per week. Billy found one of the few who specialized in birds and poultry and he was told that he could start next Monday. Billy thought that he would be following the veterinarian on calls and to farms. However, the vet suggested that before he could do that, he needed to know what Billy knew about poultry anatomy. The vet told Billy to study up on poultry anatomy before he came in the first day. Therefore, Billy borrowed a copy of the FFA poultry science manual from his ag instructor. Billy started to study the drawings from the anatomy and physiology chapter. He thought it was pretty easy to learn the parts from those black and white drawings. Billy went into the vet clinic the next Monday ready for work. The veterinarian welcomed him but then surprised him by saying he wanted to test his anatomy understanding on some real birds with Billy. The veterinarian started by showing him a live bird and asking him to identify some external parts on a healthy bird. The vet pointed to a part and asked Billy what it was. He pointed to another part and asked Billy what that was. The vet then asked Billy to identify yet another part. The vet then tested Billy on his knowledge of poultry bones. He started with this part. The vet then asked about the name of a bone in the wing. At first, Billy could only think of drumette, but he knew that wasn't a scientific bone term, but he had learned drumette from his poultry judging days. Then he asked Billy what were the skeletal parts of the beak called. The veterinarian then told Billy he was going to do a post-mortem on a bird that had been diseased. So the vet opened up a dead bird and Billy soon started to worry that the parts didn't look a lot like the black and white drawings that he had studied. But the vet pointed to a large organ and asked Billy what it was. The vet then removed the digestive tract of the bird and asked Billy to identify a couple of parts, starting with this one. He pointed to another part and asked Billy what it was, and he also asked, and what organ was on it? The vet then showed Billy the reproductive tract of a hen and asked him what part he was pointing to. While he was pointing to that part, the veterinarian asked Billy what hormone was responsible for growth and maturation of that part. Billy knew he had read that in the poultry science manual. Billy was then asked what environmental factor affected the growth and maturation of that part. The veterinarian was impressed with how hard Billy had studied to prepare for the first day on his job. Billy was surprised and pleased when the vet then asked him if, rather than job shadowing, if he would like to work at the clinic part-time for pay. Of course, Billy said yes enthusiastically, and he knew that he had another SAE that he could add to his upcoming state FFA degree application. 
Billy learned that the vet did contract work for the state veterinarian's office, and that day they were going to visit some small farms. The vet explained biosecurity to Billy on the way to the farm, but Billy had already read about it. Billy struggled, however, to put on the white suit and to get the plastic boots over his own boots, and he felt a little strange in that hair bonnet. There was a disease problem that was affecting some local commercial operations, and they were to look for birds showing any symptoms among birds in the neighboring small flocks. Billy picked up a big white cockerel and observed swollen hawks and footpads. The vet asked Billy if he knew what might be the cause. He said that their concern was that the disease he had in mind was egg transmitted. After finding some birds showing exactly the symptoms they were looking for, they took the sample bird into the lab for testing. Billy was glad he had a good understanding of poultry biosecurity. On another farm, they visited with a small local producer who raised organic chickens. The owner noted that she was losing more birds than normal. In fact, she had started 500 chicks, and of those, 60 had died in the past 10 days. The vet asked for a sick bird, and he then told Billy he would do a post-mortem. Billy noted bloody droppings in the pen where the sick bird had come from. The vet opened the bird, and the first thing that they noted was blood in the intestines. The vet then looked at Billy and asked him two questions. What did he think the disease might be, and what caused it? Billy was glad he had studied the disease chapter in his FFA manual. They were also looking for young birds with paralysis of legs or wings. The vet explained that this was a viral disease that was easily transmitted from bird to bird. He noted that sometimes such birds go blind in one or both eyes. After finding some birds showing exactly the symptoms they were looking for, they also took some of those birds into the lab for testing. On the same farm, they saw a pen of barred Plymouth Rock pullets. The owner was concerned about bloody backs on a few of his pullets. Billy had a pretty good idea of what he thought was wrong. On another farm in October, the owner told that several of her Ancona hens had quit laying and were losing lots of feathers. She worried that they might get too cold. The vet asked Billy if he might have a suggestion as to what the problem was. After a few months working for the poultry veterinarian, Billy knew he had found a career that he was definitely interested in. That spring, he filled out an application for his chapter's Poultry Production and Placement Proficiency Award. At the chapter awards banquet, he felt really good when the veterinarian he had worked for was present and was asked to give Billy his pen. Billy knew his grandma would be proud.